Hey Planet Watchers, how's life? So here we are working really a lot to strengthen the Planet Watch infrastructure, improve user experience and solve a number of outstanding issues. So let's get into the heart of the matters. So one issue that we're working on, as you know, is what I would call streaming issues. Now, I had said that we were performing extensive testing on a number of uh, delicate points and we were hoping to complete this testing phase by the end of the first week of February. So here we go, we are in the second week of February and the message is we do need a bit more time. There are still some open issues related to retrieving our target amount of data from some sensors. We have made significant progress and we are working really around the clock to solve the remaining issues. So. Again, we appreciate your patience and we are working to provide you with the best user experience as possible. So this is not just about a quick fix. It's about having st a stable solution which, which works and which will work over time. So because of this, for your own protection, we are still keeping Type, type 4 license sales on hold until we have solved all issues in a satisfactory way. So it's about protecting the network, the community, as it is today, before uh, resuming our growth, which will be very explosive, and it's been very explosive so far. So sometimes when, when you're running very fast, you need to stop for a second, make sure you're running in the right direction, uh, add safety to your, uh, to your run, and then you can restart and go even faster. So that's where we stand. Okay, now, uh, moving to answering a few of your questions as usual, I will just get straight into a few questions. And uh, again, things have been already said a number of times, but since the community keeps growing, it makes sense to repeat and clarify things which have been mentioned already. So for example, as you know, at some point back in the past, there was an issue with a, inserting the sensor location into into the app and at that point and that was a quick fix admittedly we recommended and even enforced the fact that sensors with problematic addresses would be set as a, having an address at our own premises as a company so now that was a quick fix in the meantime we have a improved we have solved the bug essentially we have recently released a, an app update, which makes it much easier than before to set your correct location. You no longer need to type addresses. You can just uh, click on, a, on your location. So, okay, we are issuing rewards to, to sensors which still have an incorrect locations, but this will not last forever because uh, I, we are recommending now that as soon as possible, you go into the app and you set your real correct locations. So at some point we will say there is a deadline to do this, but let's keep it friendly and nice, right? Please do it. Please uh, set your correct sensor uh, location for your sensor by the app. It's, it's very easy to do it. Now, next question. Uh, and again, this is a recurrent question. And unfortunately, the answer doesn't really change. So, of course, we have a, a lot of demand for uh, Planet Watch approved sensors from all countries in the world. In particular, there, there was a question about their queen of being available uh, anywhere or not anywhere. Again, unfortunately, the best we can do, since we are not the manufacturer of this sensor, is to, say, put some gentle pressure on the manufacturers, manufacturer telling them, look, there is a business opportunity for you if you enlarge the scope of your compliance certifications if you make sure your sensor is certified worldwide because there is a lot of demand for it. And we are doing this kind of discussion with the Airquino manufacturer, but these things are complex and it takes time. So the honest answer is, I don't know, as it, it doesn't really depend on Planet Wash. Uh, nonetheless, we are applying some more assuasion on the Airquino manufacturer to help them speed up the process. Now, uh, we recently released a, a tweet talking about, I believe, 
about 1,000 sensors which were banned from our network. Now, it's a very legitimate question to ask what happened, why, and how do you get banned from PlanetWatch sensor uh, network? Now, I don't believe there's any use in disclosing the details for a number of reasons. Nonetheless, I want to try to explain again what are the behaviors which are not acceptable for Planet Watch, which are a breach of our terms and conditions. So in order to do this quickly but effectively, let me show you uh, some text which appears in the general terms of sale and delivery and even in the license agreement, I believe. So these are all documents that you are supposed to read and approve. So let's see what it says. So apart from the words, the message is fairly simple, I believe. Each sensor in the PlanetWatch network is meant to serve a purpose. Some sensors are meant to measure outdoor air quality, others are for indoors, and measurements have to be meaningful. So example of behaviors which breach our terms and conditions, generally speaking, is to install sensors in unsuitable locations and operate them for the sole purpose of earning rewards. Examples include Sensors meant for outdoor use to be installed indoors and vice versa. This is not useful and it creates, it pollutes the data set. Of course, uh, the exception to this is the, is the Atmo 2 Pro being a wearable sensor, so a sensor which is meant to spend some time indoors and outdoors. So that's a bit of a special case. But the other sensors are, are are meant to be either indoor or outdoors, depending on the types. So type one and type two are outdoor sensors. Type three is indoors. Type four, if you're talking about the hardware element, is meant to stay indoors all the time. The Atmo 2 Pro, on the other hand, is meant to move. Okay, so that's the first thing where you have, which you, we're asking you to comply with. Now, more general, more generally, on unsuitable locations. So what do we mean by unsuitable locations? If you, let's say for fun, put a sensor very close to your car's exhaust, it's a joke essentially, it's something that makes no sense. The, the, the measurements will have no meaning from the point of view of assessing air quality in your neighborhood. So that's something which, again, pollutes our data set. So it's, a, it's an unacceptable behavior. Also, places with reduced air circulation. So if you, have a, if you have a basement where no humans ever go and you put your sensor in a, in a remote corner of your basement, that kind of measurement is completely useless. There is no air circulation and it's not relevant to human health. So that is something that makes no sense and is not acceptable. The third case, which some people can have made in attempts to, to exploit in the past is just putting several, two or more sensors at the same time, let's say two or three or four identical sensors in close proximity to one, and one another, building a so-called sensor farm, you could call it. Now, why this is not okay? Well, first of all, clearly this is done for the sole purpose of earning rewards, but once again, it pollutes the data set because if you have four identical sensors next to each other, they are measuring the same air. So the information sent to PlanetWatch is redundant. There is no value in four identical data streams from four sensors sitting next to each other. The value is from a single data stream. So these behaviors are unacceptable, are, are a breach of our terms and conditions. So we reserve the right to ban um, sensors uh, which <clears throat> which are deployed according to these strategies. Well, in fact, we really do ban people. So because it's a it's a matter of trust. So if you are a person who does this, to to me you are not a planet watcher. So you should not be part of the community. So today it was short. Not sure if it was sweet, because it's one of those days when you're working hard to sort out the issues and it's not the right time to make exciting announcements. Having said that, there is a lot of good stuff going on in the background 
and I think you probably believe me by now when I say that. You've seen in the past when I gave spoilers that substantial announcements followed. Things like the 10 million planets fund launched by Borderless Capital, as well as the endorsement from the Miami mayor. So when I say there's a lot going on, well, it's for real. We are talking to very interesting people and some very powerful institutions have reached out to us. But of course, in the meantime, we need to clean up the house and we are making progress, although sometimes it's not as fast as we'd like it to be. So if you trust us and see the value of what we're building, please stay with us. Keep watching the planet and you will soon see tangible progress. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice week and have a nice life. Bye-bye.